Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Pastor Darrell from The Quest in Galesburg, Illinois. I'm running a lot later than normal. Uh, just a number of things going on today. Um, haven't been able to get online before now. Uh, I'm going to wait just a minute and let a couple more people get on here before I take off with today's devotional. Um, I see a few on there, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. But uh, I want to talk today about dealing with criticism. Um, criticism is not always bad. There's being critical and criticizing. Criticism can be a put down or being harsh, or criticism can be very helpful. But I want to talk about how to deal with it when somebody has given you criticism, whether good or bad. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 5, Paul writes, Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait for the Lord. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light that which is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, that scripture is normally used talking about how we judge, but I want to talk about reversing that. When somebody's judging you, uh, judge not before the appointed time. You know, a lot of times people want to criticize us. You know, I've got my little baby in the other room right now, my grandbaby. She's going to be one year old this coming Sunday. And, uh, you know, she's a toddler. She's trying to walk, going from place to place. She falls and she's cutting teeth. So she's drooling. You know, a lot of people, if they were judging her on the level that they judge an adult, they would think, well, what's wrong with her? Well, don't judge her before her time. She's not at that place yet. That's what Paul's trying to say. Don't judge before his time and just let God take care of things. I read a story one time. You know, Most of you that know me know I'm a huge baseball fan and you know that uh, pretty much a sports fan. And there's been many times over the years I've gone to games and I embarrass people because I can be quite loud and quite vocal. But somebody once wrote this and I want to read it to you. It said, every baseball team could use somebody who knows how to play every position, never strikes out, and never makes an error. The only problem is it's hard to make that guy get out of the stands and put down his hot dog and Coke and play the game. That's a lot of us. We're criticizing things that we've never done. We've, we're just telling somebody else how to do it. Here's the fact. We all need advice from time to time. But I'm talking as you're receiving advice now, only consider the advice of the critic or the person giving you that advice under certain conditions. And these are a few things I just jotted down last night. Number one, know that the person who is giving you criticism values you. That they're not just being harsh and judgmental, they're not being jealous, but this is somebody who cares about you and thinks you have value. So make sure that the person crit giving you criticism values you. Number two, that the criticism is not tainted by their own agenda. A lot of people want to criticize you because they're jealous of you. Or they they wish they could do what you're doing, so they want to give you criticism. That's the average fan in the stands. Third thing is the person is not somebody whose nature is to be critical of everything. Come on, we all know that person. They criticize everything, everyone. I don't care... You know, if you told them you've got a gallstone this big, they're going to tell you they had one this big. It's always, there's a bigger, better, they know better than everybody else. Don't take criticism from the person whose nature is to be critical and condescending of everything. Fourth thing is that the person is not just there to criticize, but that that person's going to still be involved in your life afterwards. They're going to be giving you support that... You know, let me talk to pastors for a minute. I learned this a long time ago. The person who just flies in, criticizes, and leaves, I let that go like the wind from yesterday. Uh, if they're going to be a part of the church, they're going to be involved in the church, and they're going to invest something in it, I'll listen to that person. But I'm not going to listen to somebody who's only there to give criticism and then fly off. Make sure that that person's there not only to criticize, but they're going to give their support to the advice that they give. The fifth thing, that he or she, the person giving the criticism, has knowledge and success in the area that they're criticizing. Listen, I, I, one of my pet peeves, let's go back to sports a minute. I hate these sports writers 
who write about sports and criticize sports, and they've never played a game in their life. That uh, I can't even think of his name. That little bitty short guy that you see on TV all the time, Rosenthal. He's constantly criticizing and putting down. I can tell by looking at the guy, he's never played a game of baseball in his life. I don't, don't listen to people like that. Pastors, don't listen to somebody trying to tell you how to run your church. Mothers, don't listen to somebody telling you how to raise your kid who's never raised a kid. If they don't have knowledge, first-hand knowledge, and they don't have a successful track record, dismiss that criticism. Now, let's be honest. What really hurts us the most is when we get criticism from people who are important to us. That, that cuts to the quick. When somebody really near and dear to your heart criticizes you, it, it's hard to have your dream or your goal criticized by somebody who you admire, somebody you love, and somebody you have respect for. But if you want to achieve your dream, you'll learn how to pay that price and listen to the criticism of somebody who cares for you. Because criticism is not always bad, as I said at the beginning of this. Sometimes they're criticizing you to help you. So if they're there to invest in your life, they're involved in your life, if somebody comes along and is trying to give you spiritual life, instead of thinking they're being harsh and judging you, stop and ask yourself, has this person lived a successful, godly life? And if so, maybe you need to listen to what they got to say. But on the other hand, I think about Stacy Allison. She's the first woman who climbed and reached the summit of Mount Everest, first female ever to do it. She pointed out that there were times in her life that people criticize her. And she, she said, it's not okay to listen to what everybody else is saying under the situations like I just said. But she said, if I listened to all the people who told me how to do it, I would have never climbed Mount Everest. Sometimes you just got to venture out there, take a giant leap of faith and do it. You know, I've never planted a church before. I've pastored many churches over the last 35 years, but I'm doing something right now. People told me, you're too old to plant a church. Says who? Moses was 80 years old when he launched out of Egypt with the children of Israel. He, he got me by 20 years, so I, I, I'm not going to listen to that kind of criticism. Those people haven't ever planted a church. So I, I'm going to do what I know to do. Listen, if you've got a God-given dream, a God-given purpose or a promise and if your heart is right with God then disregard unjust criticism and stand on this verse of scripture judge nothing before its appointed time wait until the Lord comes he will bring to light that which is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's heart at that time each will receive praise from God I hope that helps somebody today that criticism is not always bad Make sure you're evaluating what they have to say honestly. Come back and see us again here at The Quest. If you're in the Galesburg area, give me a shout. I'd love to meet with you, tell you a little bit about what we're doing here. Have a great day.